Everyone's looking for ways to make home ownership more affordable, but have you considered all of your options? Today, I'm going to take you through three ways to buy one property with three different strategies. The first strategy is to buy it yourself. The second strategy is to buy it in partnership with someone else or another family. And the third strategy is to buy it and create a rental unit for someone else on that property. We'll look at the nitty gritty on how to finance these scenarios and also look at the long-term financial implications. Let's expand the realm of possibilities for you. Are you ready? Hi, I'm Nicole Hamilton, a home financing expert. Subscribe to my channel and you'll be the first to know when I upload a new video. There's a whole bunch of millennials and Gen Zers out there who want to achieve the dream of home ownership, but they feel like it's out of reach. Perhaps you feel confined to a life of renting and you see your parents or some of your friends who've become homeowners paying their mortgage payments and building equity with each payment. And meanwhile, you're just paying rent to your landlord and your rent keeps going up. But what if you can expand your home ownership options just by thinking outside of the box a little? What if there are other options out there that seem complicated but aren't? And with rents up up to 22% in the last three years in some areas, you owe it to yourself to look at all of your options. Maybe if you think about things a little differently, you can get out of renting and into home ownership in a home that you really love. Stay till the end of this video and you'll get my free resource on how to think outside of the box and strategies you can use when buying any home. Let's explore now the mechanics and the financing of buying one property three different ways. In thinking about a property to do this exercise with, we want to find a property that can be split and can have a rental unit. Luckily, there are many properties across the United States that we could do this exercise with. If you watch this video I did a little while ago, you can see how certain zoning laws are changing and how you can use them to your advantage. So let's pick a home. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to pick a home in my own neighborhood, Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Let's pick this one. This is a multifamily, so we know that we can have a rental unit and finance it as such, although it looks like a single family, not an apartment building, so it can serve all three purposes we're exploring, and it's priced at $1,375,000. We can see from the description it has parking, a first floor with two bedrooms and one bath, kitchen, dining room, a second floor with three bedrooms, one bath, kitchen and living area, and a full finished basement with two entrances. We don't have the square footage, but based on other properties in the area, I'm going to guess each floor is roughly 1,000 square feet. And the lot size appears to be 20 by 100 feet. These prices might look insane if you're looking from outside the city, but just remember, this is New York City, baby. And just for context, Bay Ridge real estate is about half the price of areas like Park Slope and about a third to a quarter the price of a lot of areas in Manhattan. Here in Bay Ridge, we have a lot of families. We have a lot of mixed housing stock. We've got freestanding homes, townhomes, large apartment buildings, small apartment buildings. Bay Ridge is about 35 minutes from lower Manhattan and about an hour to Midtown on the R train. But you can always get a seat and you can read, so it's okay. I'm gonna run through three scenarios right now with you about buying this property. So the first is buying it alone. Second is buying it in partnership with an individual or a family. And the third is buying it and creating a rental unit. We're going to go through the financing and the mechanics of how to do it. You can see up top the assumptions that we're working with. So to finance this for one party, whether it's just you or you and your spouse, you're going to have a total monthly cost of roughly $8,285 for about 2,000 square feet of livable space and probably another 1,000 square feet of basement plus a yard and two parking spaces. That's a lot of space in New York City, and it's also very expensive. You may gain some advantage as well in all of these scenarios with the mortgage interest tax deduction. If you buy it in a partnership with two parties, then you're qualifying with someone else to finance it and splitting the costs. For this example, I'm assuming you're splitting it 50-50, and so the costs are half of in the previous example. 
but you could also decide that one party gets the top floor and the other party gets the bottom floor plus the basement and yard and then you would decide what would be equitable for cost and we'll talk about partnerships in a bit in this third example you'll be buying this property yourself or with a spouse and renting out a floor we'll go through how to qualify for a mortgage using rental income in a bit but for this example i'm assuming you'd get three thousand dollars per month for rent given what comparables are in the area for the same general layout and square footage renting out one of the two full floor thousand square foot finished units so we subtract out the rent and come up with five thousand two hundred and eighty five dollars for your monthly base cost for owning roughly three thousand square feet of space plus parking in a small yard. Before we go further, let's define what we mean by partnership in this video. It's when separate legal parties enter into an agreement to buy property together. In this video, we're using two parties as our example. These two parties could be parents and an adult child, adult child's family and aging parents, two separate families, two friends, etc. For a partnership such as this, there are some legal things you'll want to hash out ahead of time in a contract. These are just some of the examples. Who can occupy the property? Who is on the mortgage? Who is on the deed? Ownership shares, etc. And I have a link below for an article interview I did with a real estate lawyer on how to do this successfully. It's very comprehensive. Check it out below. And before we go further, here are some important facts about having rental units. The rental must be up to code. You'll want to plan on financing the improvements to bring it up to code. In New York City, you can now rent out a basement, which is different from a cellar. It has certain characteristics, such as ceilings that are at least seven feet high, a separate entrance, and half the vertical height is above the sidewalk, as well as other things. I'm going to post the link to the New York City guidelines below. To qualify for a mortgage, you can use up to 75% of the appraised rental value as income. So given that this property has a basement with separate entrances, it could be that you could rent out an additional space, or if you're enterprising, you could live in the basement and rent out the rest of the house to further reduce your costs by taking the least valuable unit. If you had a rental unit in the partnership example, it could bring your monthly costs down to $2,642. An additional rental unit in the third example would reduce your costs down to $2,000 $285 and you'd own, as I said earlier, roughly 3,000 square feet of space plus a basement plus parking and a small yard. Okay, so what are your options to finance this? In all three cases, you can get a conventional loan where lenders can lend typically with a 5% down payment and up, but there are also FHA multifamily loans available for as little as 3.5 down. And the FHA loan cap for this area is 1.4 million for a two family and up. You can also use 75% of appraised rental income to qualify, but you wouldn't want to do that if you aren't having a rental tenant because then you'd have difficulty paying for your property and the qualifications are there for a reason. And you want to consider the cost of bringing the units up to code if you are renting them out so you don't get stuck in a situation where you need rental income but you don't have enough money to pay for the upgrades that you need. And this is where a really savvy mortgage broker comes in because you want to be able to find the best, most beneficial financing for your needs when buying a multifamily property. So we've looked at cost and financing these three scenarios. Now let's take a look at the equity. Obviously, one of the reasons people buy property instead of renting is that you build equity with each mortgage payment that you make. So let's see how equity accumulates, assuming that you get a fixed rate mortgage. Here are the figures, not including your down payment and any future appreciation. You've got 285,000 after 15 years just from paying your mortgage. And in the partnership example, 143,000 for a half ownership. And you want to consider that your property will appreciate significantly if you're in a desirable location adding even more equity and let's take a look at if you were to rent instead the same square foot apartment in downtown brooklyn or a similar area and compare it certainly if you're renting your rent will increase in new york city in the last five years rents increased 17 percent over that period of five years so if we assume the same increase over the next five years, you can see that rents would go up even more. 
If we compare that to the partnership example, a 30-year fixed rate mortgage would stay the same, though your property tax and insurance would increase, making this amount go up slightly, but the main component would stay the same. And then you would build equity as well. In the example where the individual or couple own the building, here's the total cost and the equity that you'd build. And certainly rental units would bring that cost way down, but keep the equity the same. I did this exercise just with one property, but obviously there are other properties in the same price range that you can split up different ways and in different conditions with different options, depending on your resources and interests. All of the properties in this video are just examples. I'm not a real estate agent. I have no personal financial interest in any of these, just to be clear. As you can see, there's a number of possibilities that you might want to consider. One of the benefits of looking at areas that are a little less expensive than other areas that you were considering is that you might be able to get more square footage and do more with it. So what are some important things you should be doing when you're considering all of these possibilities? The first thing you're going to want to do is meet with a seasoned mortgage professional to get a real sense of what you're going to qualify for. It's really important. And it's not a bad idea to go with a mortgage broker as opposed to a bank because they're going to have access to a lot of different lenders. Sometimes a certain lender won't want to do a multifamily or a rental and so they require a larger down payment or they give you worse rates just because they don't specialize in that type of thing. So you want to leave your options open. You want to work out all these financial details before you look at property and before you bid on something because you want to be solid in your financials. You don't want to overspend and you don't want to be a victim of YOLO or FOMO and all that because your net worth will thank you later. So get pre-qualified, look at available rates, figure out scenarios before you go out there and look at things. It's just a better strategy. In conclusion, don't limit your initial search to just one type of property. You could end up with more square footage and a better financial future by just thinking outside of the box a little. Exploring partnerships and rental unit opportunities may end up getting you more net worth in the future than if you just bought a property yourself. And finally, work out the financing scenarios before you go out there and start looking at things because it'll prevent you from overspending and you'll be much more competitive financially in the process when you do find something you want. If you need help, see below for my contact information and don't hesitate to reach out. I love helping people with financing. Get my resource on how to think outside of the box on your home financing at the links below.